For this video lecture, I'll look at the, some of the properties of lenses and their applications to our everyday life. This falls through the end of chapter 26. So please follow along in the textbook. There's some interesting reading there, so follow along with that. And here we go. Lenses have a lot of applications within uh, a wide variety of our parts of our, our lives here. They're used a lot in any type of projection um, aspect, with it will, whether it be a certain type of um, a, a camera or um, any type of video uh, thing or a projector or anything like that. There's also, when you use multiple lenses together, you can increase the magnification and you can get to have things that we use like telescopes or magnifying glass, uh, excuse me, or um, microscopes also, which make that image um, increase in size. And we'll go over a little bit about how that is done. Microscopes and telescopes are the most common uses of lenses in, uh, in combination together. So what you'll have is you'll have um, a microscope, first off, is something that takes a small image and makes it much larger. And a telescope is, is used for looking at things that are very far away. So each one of them has a certain um, a combination of lenses that are, are produced or put together in such a way with their a certain focal length um, that they are uh, built to do that job. So a telescope would uh, probably not do be the best job, but would not have the correct focal length for uh, a microscope. Either way, the objective lens is the first lens, and this has a magnification, and it magnifies the object and produces a real image. And then this image is detected by what's called the eyepiece lens, and this uh, eyepiece lens produces a the a image which appear which in its respect it's still flipping the image um the first one but it produces a virtual image with respect to whatever the object is originally and this is magnified many multiple times because you can do it um you have two lenses so you're just compounding it the magnification to come together the human eye is pretty crazy in how much actual like, physics and different things go on in there. I mean, just the human body and biology behind all this is pretty intense. So uh, light enters through the cornea, and depending on how your cornea is shaped, it can create uh, cause you to have uh, glasses. Um, the other idea is that if your eyeball itself is uh, not perfectly shaped or uh, uh, kind of has an odd, I wouldn't say an odd shape, but a different shape, you may need corrective glasses to correct the shape of your eyeball. Um, and so what a light does, it ends, enters through the cornea, and then there's the iris and the lens, and the, that allows how much light is into your eye. So like if you turn off the lights and you stand in the dark, your um, iris opens way up to let a lot of light into your eye, eyeball and into the inside. Um, and when it's really bright, it gets really small, so it lets in less because you don't, want, you don't need as much. And then in the back is the retina, where you have um, what are called rods and cones, which detect the, um, the uh, cones themselves are the things that detect the color um, that you see. And there's a, they, have, uh, they actually detect the three ma uh, major colors, so uh, the red, green, and blue, uh, different bits of light, and the amount of what is the percentage of each light, amount of light coming in, they respond to that. And then you also have what are called the rods in there, and those measure how much the intensity of light, so how bright something is, uh, and how much of it is coming in. So that's really how the eyeball works. There are different types of vision that need to be corrected. So nearsightedness, the image formed by your lens inside your eye and through the cornea, is actually in front of the retina um, for objects that are far away. And so this will cause uh, you not to register it fully, um, cause it blurry and different things. Um, so what happens, and because it's not right at that focal point there, and so what will happen is you will get these, uh, again, burging lens, which will separate the light and moves that image uh, to the back side where it's formed right in front of the retina. With farsightedness, the image is actually formed behind your eyeball. And so 
uh, it's not a, the you want the focal the the image to be formed directly on the retina. So for uh, closer objects, they it actually the a lens is needed to move them back further. So you use a converging lens, and it gives it a virtual image a pure of a virtual image. Um, but it is the image is formed within your eyeball directly on your retina, and this is for generally things that are closer uh, to you. Um, so you are correcting that a little bit. This is a lot, with a lot of reading glasses.